better. Just try and keep that arm straight. Wait for David to do his hair. Shot, Dev. Great shot, Dev. <laughs> Come on. I'm delighted to be joined by Kieran Fallon Jr. and his father, Kieran, six-time champion jockey, three-time derby winner here at Newmarket Lynx Golf Club. Kieran, you're in the middle of a very impressive season as an apprentice, but I gather that during your early years, you grew up in Wigan, that horse racing wasn't a sport that played a, a particularly significant role. You, you played football, you played rugby, is that right? Yeah, no, that's correct. Yeah, no, look. In my early career, I was, uh, I was up in Wigan with my mum and it was all different other sports like football, rugby, running. And then um, I, uh, I went to college as well. I studied uh, personal training and gym instructing. And then after that, um, I woke up one morning and I gave my dad a call saying I wanted to be a jockey. Take us through the thought process. How long have you thought about that? Presumably you've watched your dad's videos and I, stuff like that. I never thought about it. I just woke up and I just rang dad and just said I want to be a jockey. What, was, just like yeah, you went to no bed thought. not wanting to be a jockey and you mm. woke up wanting to be one? Yeah, there was no thought in it, no nothing, just something I just thought I'd ring my dad and I did. Because you've it. got a qualification as a, you're a qualified gym instructor, right? Yeah, I am, yeah. And I, used to, I used to have my, um, my own classes as well. I used to teach a few clients as well. So... There wasn't a long thought process. You woke up and thought, and how did that happen? Do you think? How did how did you go to bed, think not thinking? I don't know. Like it was just it was it was, it was a strange strange feeling. Um, obviously, because I've always I've always been into other sports, and I think I, I think at that point it was I've done every sport, and there's only one sport left, and it's horse racing. So I think I think that's probably what you know made my decision. Even though at that point you hadn't. You hadn't sat on a horse. Did, have you ever talked to your mother about no, about it? And you hadn't talked to him either. No, nothing. Not you at just all, woke just up sure. and rang him. Yeah. And what was what were his words if they were printable? I can't I can't really remember what he said, but it was something around the lines that you you could tell in his voice you were surprised but glad at the same time, and he was just like, well, you know, we'll get you down to the racing school as soon as possible, and that's what we did. I thought it was in your face. Um, I knew he was very sporty in that other sports bar racing and um, if Olivia wants to have a go, there's only one place to start is the apprentice school, you know, they do a great job, they teach them a lot, the basics, and I thought, well, if, 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 if he has it, it, it'll work down there, and then, of course, he's got, in particular, Michael Tebbett, Michael Hills, to look after him down there, and they said, well, you know, he seems to be quite natural, and he took off from there. And then from there... You went to William Haggis. You went to Australia, didn't you? In the yeah. in the winter as well. So yeah, I went to William Haggis. I got I had a few, uh, few I got my license and then had a few rides and then went to Australia. Come back for the start of the season and then here we are now today. What was his reaction? I wonder when you rang and said it's it's Kieran Fallon Junior here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think he, he, he I think he was surprised with with how old I was and you right. know having zero you know zero knowledge about. Horse racing, because that's a surprise, isn't it? Right, yeah. you say, you know, you, you, I mean, your, your mother rode in the gym crack. I remember, in it must be in eighty six, eighty seven. Obviously, your old man, everybody knows about <laughs> what he did in his career. Yeah, look, obviously it was a surprise, but like I said before, I think I think it's it's only benefited me really because I'm more motivated and dedicated, you know, and it's something I want to do, and it's, and and I've not picked up any bad habits early on, you know, I've I've, I've just learnt the, the the right way. Because growing up in Wigan. There won't, you know, horse racing won't be at the centre of that town, will it? If you grow up in Newmarket, you can't escape horse racing. That's that's how the town was, became a town in the first place. Yeah, but exactly. not so Wigan. No, definitely not. No, it's more, it's more, like you're saying, it's more like a kind of a city. You know, you've got Manchester, Liverpool. It's all football, rugby. You know, so it, it was it was kind of a, 
I think it was kind of more of a thing of, of wanting to 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 achieve something in life, and I felt like I've I've achieved most th most things in in other sports. I think I wanted to achieve something in in this type of type of sport. And living with him, does he does he leave his clothes all around David, the floor? David, maybe I'm answered a question for him. Maybe he did tough a tough rugby game the night before. <laughs> an alternative career. Just rugby is a bit tough. It's always being a jockey Wouldn't be times. as tough as rugby. Imagine in a scrum, David. How would you feel? A bit claustrophobic. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> claustrophobic. I mean, racing has, has obviously it completely changed your life. You it took you to some amazing high spots, but it took you to some low spots as well. And when Kieran said, I want to become a jockey, were you, would you have no hesitation in saying it's... it's a, no, I, I, I think it's a, great, it's, it's, a great, it's a great career, you know, and it's very rewarding and you get to travel the world and there's, you mean, all, all the pluses. Just when it was a lot more difficult. Today, things are monitored, you know, your career, you know, your life in general, and it is great. And wherever you go in the world now, it's, it's so much different than it was years ago. And it's all for the better. Do you think that, I suppose social media plays a role in that, doesn't it? That everything, everything a, a professional sportsman does these days is, everyone has a camera to record yeah, things. I mean, I, I mean, personally, I'm not, I don't get involved in all that. You know, I don't read about stuff. Um, I use my phone for making phone calls and texts, and that's as far as I go. Um, but a little bit of Twitter, you know, but some, but relatively nothing. But um, it's the way I am. Thank you. When you were riding, how would you describe your relationship with the press? It seemed up and down from where I was. I thought it was um, the different ones that. I got on well with and feel free to talk about whatever. But there's others that I wouldn't um, wouldn't trust at all. Little one liner and they could blow it out of proportion. I think you got a fair deal on the whole. Do you think do you think some of that was your fault? Yeah. Because I but didn't really got a hard stare then, go on. Because I, I, I didn't sing their tunes all the time, you know. Do you think there's a middle ground where, you know, like Frankie for, for example, plays the plays the press very effectively. Yeah. Do you think that, it's, do you think, it, it, I, I mean, from a, from a journalist point of view, I'm not sure it's as simple as, as singing our tune. I think that there's a, a sort of rapport there that. Yeah. As I said, I'm, you probably, I started off on the wrong foot and then it was always hard to. Turn that round. Yeah. And you start the right way and well, in that sense, Kieran, I think Kieran's made a good start. You seem to have got off very much on the right foot. I think people, they see the di they see a, a big difference between you and your dad. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I, I think I'm lucky. You know, um, being in the racing school, they, they they give you media lessons and the way you can. Lydia Hislop comes down. Yeah, she? she she gave me a talk. So I think in that perspective, I've, I've I've had the upper hand, and I've been able to cope with it and and you know present myself a lot a lot better than. <laughs> say dad did. Do you think that you're, it's something that naturally you're, you're quite able to deal with? I don't know, I'd, I get on with everybody, you know, I, I'm, I'm quite relaxed, you know, and I think that, that helps as well, like, nothing really phases me or bothers me. Not even the, the press, you mean, I had problems with, um, with the stewards uh, as well, and, you know, it took me a long time to realise that, you know, it doesn't work, you know, you, need to, you have to get on with these people, you know, you work with them. And um, it wasn't until I did that I found life a lot easier. But it's essentially a battle that you won't win. Yeah. Living with him, spending so much time with him, watching his career, what's that done for you? That must have, that must have made you a, a happier man. Give me a headache. <laughs> um, I was, I didn't, well, my, towards my career, I, my career was over and I didn't know what I wanted to do. And, um, I know I'd like to spend time in America. I want to go back to America. I love being in America. And uh, I had a lot that really I wanted to do, but because he was starting to ride, I couldn't have been away because I'd been just thinking about it all the time. I wouldn't be able to concentrate on what I'm doing myself. 
and I'd sit and wait till he's get, you know, get on his feet and get going, and which I, I thought it had taken a lot longer than it has done. So it's it's really good and it's exciting to you know, especially when he's riding winners and that. But not not so good when he's riding, you know, horses that are unruly or whatever. That's not nice to see. So there's there's ups and there's is downs as well. Miles over the bunker, I am. What's the language of the bunker? No, because I've got strongly in me. It's hot, Dave. What are the differences between Kieran at 20 and you at 20? Um, I'm not really going to answer that one. Yeah, I, I, I think people would like <laughs> to know what you are. People would what? like to know your. Well, you know, he's a lot more forward than I would have been. You know, I was a lot wilder. He's a lot more dedicated than I would have been, in particular. And um, he's gone down the right road, you know. So I think that's a, that's a plus, and it'll help him, you know. Do you think you have different personalities? Uh, no, it's pretty, pretty similar in a lot of ways, you know. Pretty similar in a lot of ways. He would have been a lot better than me I would have been. I Like, I tried all sports. I mean, I used to love running, but I was useless, you know. Hurling and football, I was too small, really, to be to be any good. But I loved all sports, you know. I done a lot of boxing. And, um, but he would have been a lot, lot better than I would have been at any sport that, I, that he has done, you know. As wild as I was, I was very dedicated as well, you know. Um, I, I would, you know, I would, you know, die to, to you know, to get to the top, you know. And um, I did have to work hard, you know, especially from the north, especially from uh, coming from Ireland as well, and having to work, you know, work way up the ladder. It, it was tough and it took a long time. Is that a disadvantage or an advantage, do you think, having, having a... A, a father like Kieran who achieves so much in the saddle. Yeah, obviously it's an advantage, but I think I've got more of a surrounding base and help and supportive around me. Look, I've got a great family and I've got great jockey coaches, I've got a great boss, um, I've got a great dad, um, and I think that's where I've had the, the upper hand, obviously, starting in this job pretty late. I've not picked up any bad habits and I've been taught everything the right way instead of the wrong way. I presume the, you know you get feedback from both your mother Julie and Kieran. Yeah, mum, dad, um, Mr. Haggis, Michael Hills, Michael Tabbit. I get feedback off of off, off them all, and I think I'm I'm very lucky to be in the position in such a strong yard and have such such very knowledgeable people in the in, in the sport to be helping me and backing me. Kieran, you've ridden winners for Goodolphin this season. That must give you particular satisfaction. That's you know a landmark in any jockey, young jockey's career. Yeah, no, look, it's very exciting to get the call up to ride for, for Godolphin and then especially to ride a winner for them. And, you know, my highlight for, for Godolphin so far will be uh, riding a glorious Goodwood winner for them, you know. Um, and but look, it's going pretty well with them at the minute, so hopefully it can continue. And does that give you more satisfaction or, or even less, I suppose, than, than those, those winners for the smaller trainers where maybe expectations aren't so high? Yeah, I, th I think you can look at it that way. Um, I, I um, personally, I like riding winners on horses that don't really have good form and haven't really got a lot of potential and haven't really won a race before. They give you more satisfaction because it's, you can, everyone can say, oh, well, it was a Godolphin's horse, you know? So, you know, it's, it's great to ride for Godolphin and ride on winners and equally, it's uh, good to ride them winners for the, for the smaller trainers. Would that apply to you when you were riding? What? The Smaller winners are, are, are as much satisfaction or even more than riding, riding big wins where you're almost expected to win. Yeah, I just love the, the challenge of riding those horses that were difficult. Because you mean, cut to your win teeth. with, I don't mean difficult around the gate and going to the start. I just didn't like them at all. You know, but I, just I, the challenge it was, especially when one wouldn't have won for a couple of years, or it was difficult about putting them on the line. Because I remember when I did the, the Midlands for the Press Association, you would ride often the favourite in the first race at Leicester on a Monday, which would have a time form squiggle, and you used to, you know, you, you got that horse often up to win, which would please punters, you know, but it, it was a horse that, it was a modest horse, and it was, di it was difficult for a jockey to get the best out of it, essentially. Yeah, it was a challenge, and to win on them was always a, always a little bit of a buzz. You know, and they all, they all count as well, especially if you're going for the championship. When you have someone snapping on your heels, every one of those are sweet, you know. You've talked about Kieran Jr.'s approach and dedication. What advice 
would you have given to yourself at 20, given what you know now? Well, obviously, if, if, you, if, if you knew what you know now, we obviously do things a lot different, you know? But at the time, I didn't know any different, you know? But, but what would you do different? I'd do a lot of things different. Go on. <laughs> no, Dave. No, I'm not going down that road. No, 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 no. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> When you were riding, there weren't many people who put an arm around you, were there? No, but it wasn't the way it was then, was it? It's different today. For the better, isn't it? What now? Yeah. Yeah, I would say so. Would you say yeah, so? Yeah, definitely. Look, that's why you've got like the racing school there for people who do need the help and they, they can provide it for you. You know, because in your case, you were tough enough to survive and thrive, weren't you? Yeah. You, you obviously, like, you had that determination to succeed the will to win and the, and the talent to go with it. But at the same time, there were times in your career when pastoral care would have helped, when you would have had someone put an arm around you and say, do this, don't do that. For sure, yeah. Um, when I was up north, I um, had Jimmy Fitzgerald, who was great ahead of and then the Jack Ramsey. But when I moved down south, the bigger yards, that's when I got tougher. Because you made the move to Warren Place in 1997, didn't you? Was it, yeah. And that was that was that tougher with southern based jockeys? Did you feel that there was a, a little bit of a of a conspiracy sometimes? Well, I wouldn't say a conspiracy, but it was tougher. You know, the, I was used to running with the boys in the north and riding against them more so than coming down south. When you come down south it was um, I should say much more more difficult to ride and uh, against more of their styles and their characters and everything else. You know, it took me a while to to be able to find a rhythm. And was it difficult, was it a, a bit of a culture shock walking into Warren Place for the first time? Of course it was, you know, from, from Jimmy Fitzgerald, as I said, to, to Henry Sasser, some difference. I was lucky enough then to be able to get probably one by the job I was most happy in was um, uh, Sir Michael Stouts. What was different there? Well, much more relaxed. He was great to work for, easy to ride for. It was much more enjoyable in, in every aspect, you know. Even just going for breakfast in the morning with him or a glass of wine in the afternoon, you know, be, before a classic, just to discuss, you know, it could be anything, you know. It's just a relaxing evening, whereas you would never do that in a warm place. That was a, not a, to use the word stricter, but just a less relaxed atmosphere. Yeah, more and more, yeah, more so the, less relaxed than anything else. And from Freemason Lodge, it must have been something of a wrench to ride for Bally Doyle. But I suppose it was a, at the time it was a it was a job that you couldn't really you couldn't. No, turn and, down. and I don't know. It was. I mean, it, 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 it it's a tough road, you know. The traffic, the racing, seven days a week. I just thought it'd be a little bit easier. Not so much racing in Ireland, just riding in the big races and the big days, rather than Monday to Sunday. You know. So I thought it was time to go. You've started at a very high level there, haven't you? William Haggis is one of the top trainers, well, in, in, in Britain, in the world, really. Yeah, no, I'm very lucky to, to, to have a, a strong yard supporting me. Um, Mr Haggis and uh, Maureen, they've, they've brought me up very well and they've, they've taught, me, taught me everything they, they possibly could have taught me. Um, they've looked after me very well. They've brought me up like I'm their own. Um, you know, they've, they've looked after me. Um, Really well, and made sure I've I've learned my trade, and yeah, they've given me they give me some nice chances this year, and hopefully it can continue. Are you surprised how well it's gone? Because it, again, I mean, you've really hit the ground running, really from the start of your career, haven't you? Yeah, no. Look, it, we started off the year um, just to kind of work on the back end of last year, which was just to ride a few winners would have been nice, and then you know build up on the connections I made at the back end of last year, and you know. When you start riding for the, the, the top trainers and you, you start riding a few more winners, it kind of puts you in a position where you have to just keep going and, and not take him back. And I think that Mr Haggis and my agent, we've all agreed just to carry on doing the same thing. And if we keep riding the winners, then it's, it's a bonus. What are your ambitions for him? 
Um, well, I, I just, I mean, the way it's gone so far, if he continues and, you know, if he continues being as dedicated as he is, he should go a long way. You know, his, his weight's pretty good. He doesn't have much problem with his weight. He's done everything right so far, and I think he can go a long way. And Kieran Jenny, what are your ambitions? Um, obviously, I just want to, I want to achieve a lot more than my dad achieved because we're so competitive in every way, in everything we do. So I just want to better his career, really. See, that's a bold call, isn't it? Because he had some career. Yeah, he did. Um, but I think with the, the, the base, um, the base I've got, the, the, with all the surroundings and the people I've got around me, I think I can achieve that. And William Haggis, obviously, you've mentioned that he's, uh, he's been a huge help to you. Does he have a, a much of an input into the, the way that you ride? Yeah, definitely. He's helped me and he's got, he's got me to where I am today by um, taking my time with me and not, not rushing me into getting my licence and not rushing me into, into situations where I probably wouldn't have been able to, to deal with. He made sure that I was ready for, for everything that would come my way and um, he, he speaks to me every, um, every morning and he asks me where I'm riding and he'll tell me little inputs about the, about the tracks as well. And looking at, at your father's career, what sort of a template do you think he, he set for any young jockey or particularly for you? You know, look, yeah, obviously he's an idol in a lot of people's um, eyes, but to me he's just, he's just my dad um, and I just want to just want to better his career, really. Something's funny, doesn't it? Yeah. It's perfect. Look at that. Which of the rides in your career then do you look back with? Do you look back on with particular satisfaction? Um, Which were the best ones? Well, obviously my first Derby, first Guineas, Sleepy what, Time. Oh, sleepy, sleepy Time, time yeah. yeah. What about the others? Chris Kinn, North Light. What about um, America, Islington? Well, no, no, Islington in America. Dylan Thomas. A great ride with a great yeah. race. But well, I'll tell you what I enjoyed probably one of the most I enjoyed was top season the Chester Cup. Yeah. Come, come from a long way back, or King's Best in the Guineas, because there was a big field, I think there was nearly 30 runners. Yeah. And I went my way through the field, even though he was travelling strongly, I got the right gaps. But when you're riding good horses, it makes it just a little bit easier. I think more than most jockeys, most sportsmen, I would have associated you as someone who, when he was confident, you walked out with a body language that you could win virtually every race. And I'm yeah. talking about 2003, maybe 2004. There, there was a, that period I remember when I'm a terrible cards player, but I wouldn't mind playing cards against you because I don't think you can pull a veneer over, over how you feel. When you're up, everyone knows, and I think it's the same when you're down as well. Yeah, probably a good assumption. I had a very good agent, David Pollington. Yeah. He was a genius. You know, I know where I'm going for the week week before and on a Sunday all the rides would be done for the whole week and it made my job very easy and he was a genius at picking picking horses that you wouldn't even have thought for even the small trainers or owners. My mother and I heard of some of them and he'd say we'll go to Beverly on Thursday he said for such and such he said it'll just about when but he'd never say you know, this or when that or when that's the way he always was. And that obviously you win, you, you win you'd have, races you'd have and that so builds much up confidence. confidence. He, he built me with so much confidence as well. And what about when that confidence dropped? Because that also happened. There were times when you, you didn't seem so cocksure. Probably when he retired, you know, and then I had to find a new agent. And I found it hard. You know, obviously I was getting older and I wasn't getting the same rides and had the same horses and obviously not the same agent. Then things were difficult. But when, as you say, when things were good, they were great. And which of your dad's rides are the ones that stand out for you? One ride stands out to me in particular is uh, North Light in the Derby because I don't think many people have actually watched it and realised he's only, he's only given the horse two flicks, you know, and I think that, 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 that was showed the, the amount of strength and how he got a horse to, to run for him. I think it was pretty special to win the Derby by giving a horse only two flicks is, is pretty remarkable and that's always stuck to me and I've tried I've tried to you know I've tried to reflect on that and, and ride in that similar style where I don't pick my stick up until you know the last furlong. Interesting what you say about North Light because in your dad's career a lot of people I think you know people called him the enforcer as if it was about brute strength and bullying but 
it was really about empathy, it was about intelligence. You know, he rode horses who had longevity. Yeah, exactly. Look, it was all about trying to get the to get the horses to run for him without picking the stick up and I think that's what, you know, a lot of people kind of remember Dad for. You'd never never go to the stick to the last minute and especially that 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 ride and that race has always stood out to me and I'll always I'll always remember that and I think it was a you know, it was, a, it was a special ride. Dylan Thomas was amazing. You were in court the next day and you delivered him to win an arc. Yeah, but I never even thought about the next day. I was thinking about the day in present, you know. And he was my favourite horse. I never got beaten on him. And we had a great rapport. And he was the same. He was such a, such a great temperament. Everything about him was like clockwork from the first day I've ever rode him. I got on him in Tipperary, in a maiden Tipperary, he went around on a bridle. And when you'd see him in the paddock, you'd think he should be pulling a cart. A big, raw animal. But when he got on him, he just, just a float. He was like a, he was like a Rolls Royce. And, a, and another one is uh, Night of Thunder in 2014, because I don't think that was the best horse in the race. And I think if he tried to correct the horse and keep it in a straight line, I don't think it would have won. I think it was very, the, the way, he let the horse just drift and, you know, come to the line just by pushing it as well. It was just, you know, it was remarkable to get the to get the outsider to win the race and he was definitely wasn't on the best horse in the race either. Yeah, you can have that. We'll give you that. He's a very kind to you, isn't he? Huh? When, um, this for the win, Dad, yeah? Yeah. When Kieran says he thinks he can match or beat what you've achieved... Beat. Beat? Yeah. How realistic an ambition is that? I didn't find it very hard. What, to achieve what you achieved? Yeah. You mean... I was suspended for a long time as well. It was, um, well, it was three and a half years, wasn't it, before the court case. I wasn't allowed to ride in England. Right. So isn't he lucky, in a way? And I, so, but I mean, like, in that sense, though, you're underplaying what you achieved, aren't you? Yeah. Because I could have done a lot better. I know I could. Right. How many, how many classics, how many championships? Championships is as many as I wanted. Right. If I was allowed to ride in the country. I had good jobs and easy. It made it easier for me. And so, with what Kieran says, because that's quite, you know, that's a bold claim. He's, he's 20 years old, he's in his first full season riding, to say that he thinks he can, he can beat what you did. Yeah, well, I think horses run for him. You can see that at the moment, horses can run for him. Because you have horses that. Are, yeah, horses feel at ease. You know, a lot of time when you get on horses, they're a little bit toy or edgy or whatever. And if you can get them to switch off, well, then you're halfway there. Right. Because Aidan once said about you that it's almost like you go to a different land when you're on horseback. Yeah. And that was, that sort of struck a chord, I think, with people who had watched you over the years. Yeah, or else, look, look at another way, the, um, with animals or whatever, you know, with pets, with your own pets, you, you know the, the, the bind is there. And it's the same with horses. Th there's that empathy. Yeah. And Kieran's got that empathy. Well, it looks like it so far, you know, the, the some of the horses, I think, did a winner at Epsom the other day there on a horse that hadn't won a race before on a, a difficult track, early stages of his career. The right signs are there anyway. Kieran, Kieran, well done. Next uh, time, can we play the... Um, you've improved, haven't you? The you one, like that? I'd like to play the one with the windmill when you hit it through the clown's mouth. Do you understand what he means? Yeah. Um, the, what do you call it? Crazy golf. Crazy golf, yeah. yeah. OK, yeah, no problem, Dave, yeah. I'm good at that one. Lovely. Okay. It's been a long yeah. day.